Few countries have, have ever reached orbit. Um, now you say, okay, well, let's make it reusable, um, which means you've got to strengthen the stages. You've got to add a lot of weight, a lot of uh, thermal protection. Um, you've got now we, we, we could fail. Uh, I'm not saying we, we are certain of success here, uh, but, but we're going to try to do it. A fascinating drawback was detected by SpaceX when assessing their heat shield. The rocket that will take Starship to Mars is preparing for its next significant leap with its first orbital flight anticipated later this year. SpaceX is currently getting ready for the final essential testing, as well as the ones that will come after. One of them is the difficulty of creating a heat shield, which is essential to the success of the Starship's first test flight in orbit. A thermal shield that can bring orbital Starships back to Earth safely has been researched for a long time by SpaceX. These heat tiles are intended to shield the rocket from the atmosphere, either during atmospheric entry or re-entry. The spacecraft will approach Mars' atmosphere at a speed of about 27 kilometers per hour, and it will slow down by performing a belly flop maneuver akin to skydivers. Considering that the air hitting the space shuttle on re-entry reached a temperature of roughly 1650 degrees Celsius, Starship will have to resist some extreme heat. Persistence as it pressed against the surface, Similar sweltering temperatures of about 1300 degrees Celsius were experienced by NASA's most recent Mars rover as it entered the planet's atmosphere in February 2021. For the Starship, SpaceX chose stainless steel to better withstand those high temperatures. Aluminum and carbon fiber can function steadily up to about 150 degrees Celsius, according to Musk, who previously discussed this in a January 2019 interview with Popular Mechanics. As opposed to stainless steel, which can withstand temperatures of up to 870 degrees. Thermal protection tiles are essential for a spaceship to survive re-entry. While this is an improvement, it also implies that the steel will require assistance to withstand a landing. The energy will be lost when the heat shields heat up and burn away. Starship insulates the spaceship from the heat of re-entry using ceramic thermal protection tiles to enable speedy reusability. The tiles of the Starship are linked to the stainless steel exterior via studs, unlike the Space Shuttle's tiles, which are exceedingly lightweight and brittle. To prevent heated gases from accelerating along straight routes, the tiles are hexagonal. In contrast to the Shuttle's aluminum construction, which had to be kept below 180 degrees Celsius, give or take, the Starship's structure can theoretically survive and remain functional at temperatures reaching 800 degrees Celsius. While the roughly 25,000 tiles on each Starship have virtually no experience serving as a heat shield on Starship prototypes, launching them on suborbital test flights will subject those heat shield installations to significant mechanical and thermal stresses that are at least as great as those that the Starship will have to withstand during launch and after re-entry. As a result, tiles have previously cracked and fallen off, but recently, during testing, the thermal protection system tiles flew off Starship much more forcefully. The most recent incident when SpaceX lit all six engines on its Starship prototype on September 8 is also the most catastrophic. Ship 24 was equipped with updated Raptor 2 engines, which, when all six were fired up for the first time, could generate up to 1,380 tons of thrust. Ship 24's engines burned for about eight seconds, making it one of the longest static fires ever carried out on a Starship test stand in addition to shattering the record for the highest thrust produced during a Starbase rocket test. This test run, however, was not entirely successful because it was able to reproduce a fault that had previously affected the upper stage Starship as well. The ship's severe shaking from the static fire has caused numerous heat tiles to collapse. In fact, a Twitter user named Zach Golden said that he counted almost 30 damaged or missing tiles on Ship 24 after a six-engine static fire test that lasted for eight seconds. In reply to this, Elon Musk tweeted, Yup, there's a reason we do static fires much better to break things on the ground than en route to orbit. However, it's also important to note that Musk has faced this topic before. Looks like some TPS tiles fell off during the static fire. Do you think this will be a serious issue for the orbital launch, or does the team already have a solution? A follower of Elon Musk, Toby Lee, questioned him last year in the static fire on Ship 20. Then the Musk man gave us a rather unexpected response. No, we expect some tiles to shake loose during static fires. After that, he added, shaking out the problems, literally. A first in the aerospace industry, SpaceX hopes to totally recycle the upper stage. 
Even though SpaceX reuses the first stage boosters of its Falcon 9 rockets, the second stage still accounts for a significant portion of a Falcon mission's launch costs, because it must be manufactured specifically for each mission. In contrast to the Falcon 9's second stage, which cannot carry people, the upper stage of a Starship can carry both cargo and people depending on the mission profile. The Starship will flip itself at an angle that exposes the heat shield to either the atmosphere of Earth or Mars, making it essential for the Starship's survival. A human grade should be given because even a minor mistake could cause the spacecraft to disintegrate upon landing and endanger the lives of the crew. Finding a way to stop the tiles from coming off has thus been one of the team's main concerns. It's unclear how Musk plans to address this issue, although he can draw on earlier technology. In any case, even for crew flights, dropping heat shield tiles are a typical issue in the rocket industry. A crew of seven was launched into orbit aboard the shuttle Endeavour's ice as assembly mission on August 8, 2007. The STS-118's launch, which was another flight to the ISS, resembled many other launches during the shuttle program. Notably, a small area of damage to the Endeavour's heat shield drew some unanticipated attention during this mission. Thankfully, the post-flight investigation revealed that the crew and orbiter were secure. This incident is only one of many incidents of tile damage the shuttle fleet has experienced throughout the course of its operational life. When the shuttle Atlantis landed on Edwards Air Force Base in December 1988, ground crews saw significant tile damage. Fast forward a few decades to the 1980s, a surveillance satellite was launched by the Department of Defense's STS-27 flight for the CIA in the National Reconnaissance Office. The precises of this deployment are currently under wraps. Over 700 tiles of Atlantis heat shields were broken or missing during STS-27, causing significant damage. In this image, the tile damage is visible. On the close side of the shuttle, take note of the white pock marks that are dispersed along the black tiles. Robert Hood Gibson, a seasoned astronaut, was shaken by the damage and thought, we're going to die. Fortunately, a steel plate took the most of the heat during re-entry, as Gibson said. During its test flight in 2014, NASA's Orion crew capsule, which employs legacy heat shield technology from the Apollo program, successfully tested the high-speed re-entry. But perhaps Elon Musk, the man prefers to design and develop his own TPS system, and then one day their gargantuan startership vehicle will belly flop through the atmosphere, taking a page out of the space shuttle's playbook. Sad to say, but this pretty much wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section below. We'd love to hear your input on this matter, and we'll be responding to a lot of your comments. Before we wrap up, it would mean the world to us if you all pounded the like and subscribe button. Our hearts are always full from your care, enthusiasm, and support. I guess it's farewells for now. Till the next video drop, you all take care.